Hi, Karen here from stampingbees.co.nz. Welcome back to our monthly global hop, our global video hop. This month's theme is masculine. So much fun trying to come up with a masculine card. I do find them a little bit harder, but it is certainly fun to think outside the box, so to speak, of what you're used to doing. So, um, and once I have started it, I do actually quite enjoy creating a masculine card. So please do watch and enjoy and don't forget to click on the next person's video. There is some absolutely amazing videos this month and you will really enjoy them. So let's flip over and let's get started. So yes, masculine. Always find, as I say, that a lot harder to do. But once I get started, I actually really quite enjoy thinking of a male theme. Now for this card today, this is the masculine card that I decided to make. I have gone for a sepia theme and I have used the technique of the washed out background and some double stamping. So I'll show you how I did that and I will show you the products that I have used before we get started. And I used, let me just grab them. Starting off with the Sailing Home stamp set. This is just gorgeous. I do love what you can do with this, with the dies and with the stamps. So the dies, I have used a few of the dies. These are called Smooth Sailing dies. And the images on here, which are just outstanding. And I have used for the back, some background stamping the words from Parisian Beauty and the stamp here that looks a bit like waves. And I have also used a sentiment from here to put on the inside of the card. There's just so many options in here. It's so versatile. And I love that script. And for the dimensions of the card, the base is in crumb cake. And I've written them down here. Crumb cake. And I've cut that at 29 by 10 and a half and a bit of scrap for the sentiment on the front and for some of the seaweed. I have used soft suede, and that is two pieces at 10 by 14 centimeters, one for the inside, and one by 10 and a half by seven. I have used the die cut, die cut, I have used the rectangle stitched dies for the shimmery white piece that we're going to be using to do the watercolour. And that is the fourth size down. And I have also used a bit of vellum, the embellishment and some pearls, which we'll colour. And of course, the designer series paper. That's at 13 and a half by nine and a half. So let's get started. We will start with the shimmery white because that will need a little bit of time to dry. So let me just get my piece of paper for stamping off. And as I said, I've got the this stamp here for the background and some words. So we'll start off with the words. Now I don't want it very dark, so I am gonna stamp off about three or four times before I stamp onto my bit of paper. So just inking up and then stamping off. So this is the stamping off technique. So it's when you want basically the ink of a certain shade, but you don't want it really, really dark. You want it just to be subtle. So that is called stamping off. And then I'm going to use this wavy pattern as well, which I thought was appropriate being at sea. And there's no, set pattern and just randomly pop them on because that isn't going to be the highlight. You're not going to really see that as such. Okay, next step, I'm going to pop this into, now pop this into my Stamparatus. I'm pretty sure that's where I set it up for. Yes, it is. Okay, now this is where the colouring comes in, some colouring. I'm going to use for 
the base, my crumb cake. So I'm just going to cover the stamp with the crumb cake. And then I'm going to bring in my pens. I'm, I've got three Stampin' Write pens. This is Pumpkin Pie. This is Early Espresso. And this is Soft Suede. So I just want to give some shading into this. So just popping a bit here and there. Remembering that I've already done a bit of crumb cake on there. So... I'm just lightly adding some colour. I will make this top part a little bit darker. And just some bits in here. And the pumpkin pie, I just wanted to add just a little bit of colour. Though it does blend in with the sepia quite nicely my sepia sort of theme. So with this technique, you really don't know what you're going to get each time. All right, so I'm just giving it a good ink. There we go. And now the next step is to get your aqua painter and you're just gonna mess it up. So squirt out some water and then just mess it up, basically. You can do as little or as much as you like over the whole piece. Now, what we're going to do is we are going to leave that to dry. And we are going to come back because the double stamping part comes in because I will go over this again with the stamp just to get the image quite a little bit sharper than what it is. But we're using the colors to create that washed background look. So we'll set that aside and we will come back to that. Hopefully it is going to dry. Otherwise I will have to sneak off and pause and dry it with the heat gun so that we can finish the card. Okay, so. I'm taking my crumb cake piece and I am going to just use my bone folder to give that a good burnish on that crease. And we will start putting our card together. So what I have done is I have roughed up the edges, another one of my favourite sort of things to do. So this is choice. You don't need to do this if you don't like this technique, but I actually think that it's quite good for this style of card, the sepia, sort of old-fashioned, masculine look. And it adds some wonderful texture to your project. I might just turn that light on, actually. Not to turn it on. I hope that the first part hasn't been too dark for you. We've got the natural light today being daylight, but I do apologise. I can actually see better what I'm doing now. So I'm just giving this a good, doesn't matter if you rip a bit. <clears throat> Isn't this amazing? I love all this new, old newsprint. So, that's all roughed up. Now, I do want the corners, the top left-hand corner, a little bit rougher, so I will just roughen that up a bit more because I do want to bend it a bit. And I will do that with the bone folder as well. Just give it a good rough. And then I'm just going to break the fibres up a bit with my bone folder. Okay. I'll just make a little bit of a mess, but that's all right. So we will glue this together. And I might just grab this glue. 
actually. I'll crack open a new one. Just make sure it all comes out. The other one is upside down, so. Okay. A little bit of glue there. Just popping that on. Now I am going to glue that down onto the base. out there today. I don't know if you can hear it. We're sort of up on a ridge. So we do, depending which way it's blowing, get a bit of a gale. We don't mind as long as we get a bit of rain. Our tanks are still a bit low. Now we'll do the inside. So I have just used the soft suede to stamp this. So this is a knot, a rope knot, and I'm just going to pop that in the corner there. And then I'm going to use, and I'll bring over my foam mat to stamp with this, because as you know, there's no foam underneath the photopolymer stamp, so we just need to add a little bit underneath so we get a nice crisp image. And this is just says, you made my day. There we go. You made my day. Put that over there. <clears throat> and I will glue that onto soft suede. And one more. Just a little bit of glowing today. And I'll pop that on the inside. Getting there. So that is going to be our base. So I can pop that on. The base for the shimmery white. straight. So the other thing is that I'll do while we're waiting, I have put three pearls on the card, but I obviously didn't want them white to keeping keeping in with the theme. So I have coloured, I have used my blend, stamping blends, and used the dark soft suede. So I'll just quickly give these. Now, remembering when you're colouring pearls that you don't... Uh, go over it too much otherwise you take the sheen off the top then it's the little layer will be lifted that makes it nice and shiny so they're ready to go now i have pre-cut the embellishments that i have used for the front of the card i have cut out one in of the seaweed in soft suede, one in crumb cake, and one in vellum using that die. And then I stamped thanks on some soft suede, and I used the this, um, this die from the coordinating die set to cut that out. Now I find with these small ones, I always use a bit, a bit of washi tape to keep those in place while I cut them. And I've also used this die to cut out a knot, a rope knot. So much wonderful detail in there. Right, I'll just get those bits out. So let's have a look and see. I'll pop these back in here. And the other thing I'll do while we're waiting for that to dry, just get this ready. I wanted some thread on my anchor, but I didn't want the blue in there. So I've used the coordinating thread with this suite 
but I am just going to pull out, gosh, that one's really getting, I'm just gonna pull out the blue from this and I'm just going to keep the lighter color. You can even break that down again and just have a few pieces. And of course you just keep those and use them for another project. So I'll pop that together as well. I will just use an anchor again. Aren't these amazing? Look, steering wheels and anchors. So cool. And I'll thread this through. Oops. Come on. Typical. <laughs> always hate doing these sort of things when I'm trying to do it with people watching, so to speak. Right, now I'm just going to thread that through, thread that through there. Should have done this before. There we go. And that's ready to go as well. So let's bring this back in and see if it is dry. Uh, I might have to pause you here and go and dry it off a bit. It's not quite dry. Okay, back again. I've gone off and I have dried that. And we will just give this another stamp just to outline that lighthouse a bit better than that. So I won't go over with all the colours. I will just add a bit of the crumb cake and probably probably just a bit of the dark at the top I think a bit of the and if you don't like this if it's too dark when you put this on you can always just watercolor it out a bit again but there we go that's Perfect. And I will just add a little bit of softening on there. There we go. So if you dry it off between actions, if you if so to speak, dry it off between re-inking, then the colours do blend in well. Here we go. And I just want, the last thing I wanted to add to that was some birds, some seagulls. So I have used these three seagulls and I have used soft sway, but I will stamp that off. Oops. stamped it off about four or five times because I don't want it too um, dark. I just want it very subtle. Okay. The last thing, of course, is to flick a bit of water on. Now, you, if you don't like this, of course, once again, you don't need to do it. There's two ways. You can just make sure you've got water down the tip of your brush making sure that there's something, yep. And you can use your finger like that. Some people like to use the lid of their aqua painter. Whatever you like to do is entirely up to you. But I think the blots of water really just finish this off perfectly. Okay, let's start putting this together. So we'll pop that on the front. And then we can, now as we're putting it together, you'll see the water drops begin to change the colour. They uplift the colour from the paint, paint the watercoloured area. 
just add some real texture to that watercolor. Okay, so what I did is I actually did break some of these up. I'll start with this one as the base. Okay, so you don't need to glue all the way up. I'm just putting a bit of glue down the bottom here. Oops, we don't need that much, but that's all right. So we'll start off with that one. Then I'll put this one on. The glue does show through on vellum, as you know, but because it's going to have something on top of it, it is not going to matter. I'm just going to weave those in a little bit. Just going to weave it in so that they are intertwined. And then I am going to break that one off from there. And I'll pop that one. I'll pop that one underneath here. And then this one on top. Okay. Right. And I'm going to just pop a couple of glue dots on the back of here. And glue dots. Glue dot. That's because I was thinking I need a glue dot for that. I'm just going to pop some dimensionals on the back of here. going to go there so that covers up the the bottom of actually I might just put it a little bit further down because I've got this to go as well so I will put I'll just put I don't need um, a dimension up there but I will just put one here and what I do for that sort of thing is I just cut oops I just cut a strip from my side of my dimensional packet and pop it down like that. So you don't waste any of that dimensional packets that you get. You can use every little bit of it. Okay, and I'll just put that on a bit of an angle. Like that. If you wanted, if they become annoying, you can put a bit of glue, but I quite like them um, just sort of moving around. And then for this, I'm just going to use a glue dot. And pop that there. On the top, I might put just a little bit of glue on here. It on there might be easier and pop that down there there we go and there we have it masculine card sepia vintage sort of image which i think turned out pretty pretty good for a masculine card the stamp set it really does lend itself to making these amazing amazing themed cards I feel with the designer series paper etc and you see where the water dots have been lifting the color and just adding that real old worldy look to that lighthouse 
So I really do hope you enjoy. I hope there's something that you've picked up in this card and a technique, I should say, that you've picked up in this card. Please do click on the next person's video and enjoy. There are some fantastic videos for you to watch. Take care. Bye.